Hi right guys, how's it going? I uh, haven't made a video for a while because I've had some legal troubles that I've had to sort out. But I'm off the tag. No more tag on my leg, which is good. Um, I've been to court. I had to go to Crown Court. And believe it or not, I represented myself. I did a really good job as well. You don't need a solicitor. It's a complete waste of time. I swear to God, like, you think you need a solicitor or a barrister in court. No, you don't. You just talk like a normal person. You listen to what's been said and you just talk and save yourself a lot of money. Um, I got off with 150 hours community service and I'm quite looking forward to that because because I'm an oil man, I'm, you know, oil investing in that, I sort of have a lot of spare time. So I'm hoping we get to do litter picking. 150 hours of litter picking because I do that anyway. I do litter picking in the Licky Woods sometimes. I take a bin bag with me and walk around the woods and do some litter picking uh, and often come back with a full bag there's that many people littering it's really bad isn't it so I'm hoping that's what I get on you know mostly just doing litter picking on community service but wh whatever whatever I have to do should be a laugh um, I can't talk too much about the crime for legal reasons but it was a very minor offence it was um, an abusive telephone call to a right horrible cunt that fully deserved it and uh, so that's all I can really say about it but yeah she was a right horrible cunt and she fully deserved it um, so yeah uh, quite proud of it really and if I only get 150 hours community service nothing I was ready to go to prison there were uh, what I'm on at the minute I'm on an 18 month suspended sentence for a phone call ridiculous isn't it I'm going to talk about that later 18 month suspended sentence with an eight months uh, prison term above my head. So if I do anything wrong in the next 18 months, I get eight, eight months in prison. So for a telephone call, bonkers, isn't it? Sounds, something sounds a bit wrong there. As well, first offence, I haven't got a criminal record till now. So this is a first offence. So something don't sound right, and we're gonna talk about that now. I committed a very minor offence, but it ended up at Crown Court. Well, let's talk about what happened. So I committed the offence um, late one night, had a few too many to drink and whatever, right? Now, a few days later, the police came to arrest me and they did their bit, they arrested me. I got took to um, Oldbury Police Station, spent the night there in a cell. And then the next day I was taken to Magistrates Court to be processed at Magistrates Court in Birmingham. And everything was just going, you know, as you'd expect, all being done uh, to the letter of the law and everything. So, went to magistrates, appeared in magistrates, and it was all just a very routine matter. You know, they said, look, what you've done is wrong. Um, we're going to put you on six weeks conditional bail, which is where you're just told, don't do anything again for six weeks, and then you've got to reappear at magistrates. Just behave yourself, basically. And then you assume then, you, you do that, you do your six weeks where you just behave, don't make any more phone calls or do anything stupid, and then you're back at magistrates and, you know, you've got to pay a fine. Maybe even you have to do a little bit of community service or something, and that's how you'd expect it to be dealt with. So the first appearance of magistrates court, that, that's what happened, you know, six weeks, conditional bail, come back to court in six weeks. So I thought, right, fair enough. And that's what I did, I left the court. Now, I did the six weeks conditional bail, I did everything I was supposed to. I went back to court and magistrates, and suddenly, even though nothing had changed in the case other than that I'd behaved for them six weeks, suddenly it was a big deal. And they were threatening, prison. They were threatening two years in prison. Yet at the first appearance, the first magistrate's appearance, Nothing had happened like that. It'd just been like, yeah, this is just a standard run-of-the-mill case. They had, they had all the evidence there of everything I'd done, everything I'd said on the phone call. Um, and suddenly, the judge, in the second appearance of magistrates, six weeks later, was threatening two years in jail, even though I'd done nothing more wrong in the six weeks. The first appearance, they weren't bothered. Second appearance, whoa, serious now, mate. And you're going to have to go to Crown Court. There was actually a woman in my court case 
um, because I was representing myself. There was a woman there who I don't think she's on prosecution. I'm not sure what she was, but she just couldn't believe it. I saw her face. I was just totally shocked because that's not normally how these cases like mine are dealt with. You don't normally get sent to Crown Court for a phone call that you've done. I hadn't acted on the phone call. You know, I made an abusive phone call, but I hadn't actually acted on it. I hadn't done anything. And I'd done the six weeks conditional bail. That never, ever normally happens. And she was just there, like, horror struck. Well, not, I was going to say horror struck, but just couldn't, just totally, what's just happened? Because obviously she'd seen loads of cases like mine before. Someone's made an abusive telephone call when they shouldn't have. And, you know, it just gets dealt in magistrates, and that's it. The magist Crown Court's a more serious court than magistrates. Crown Court, you know, they're dealing with murders and stuff. They're dealing with serious, serious crime. And they, they need to deal with Dave Genvy. First offence, I've got no criminal record, for an abusive telephone call at Crown Court. You might say, well, all right, then, well, why, why were you being singled out, Dave Genvy? Why are you being singled out by the British legal system to be bullied? The reason is because the police, the UK police, West Mercia and West Midlands police, hate my guts. And we need to talk about that now, the reasons behind that. You have, you have seen me make videos where I took the piss out of them. Because I'm willing to fight any UK police officer in a boxing match. Or on top of Rednall Hill. Could be on Rednall Hill, could be in a boxing ring. Any UK police officer. That guy, Whiskey Victor, you remember him from my last video? That's blatantly, it, it almost undoubtedly is a police officer who's pissed off. Whiskey Victor, you pussy. Come fight me. You've got my address. But you ain't got the balls to fight me, have you? Because you know you're going to get battered. That's the truth, isn't it, Whiskey Victor? See, Whiskey Victor's like a radio code that police use. That's how I know he's a police officer. And the police absolutely hate my guts because I take the piss out of them all the time. I had a long history with the police, slagging off. Because, you know, they come to your door to tell you off and you just slag them off back. Just fuck off, police. And they don't like that. And what the police have done in my case for this telephone call, this minor case, what they've gone and done is they've gone and actually talked to the judge the judge of that second appearance at Magistrates had been talked to by the police. I'm certain of it. I'm almost certain that the police can actually influence court cases when they're absolutely not supposed to. So if there's anyone on the street that they don't like, the police, right? If there's anyone they don't like who's just a bit of a tough guy, takes the piss out of them, don't, not, not intimidated by them, um, what they'll do is if that guy gets in trouble for a minor offence, minor thing, like me with a telephone call, what they'll do is they'll go to the judge to try and either get him sent down or some serious community service. I've got 150 hours community service to do now for a telephone call. It's bonkers. But I'm going to try and enjoy it because it'll get me out of the house. Uh, oil investing, you know, gets a bit boring sometimes. So... Um, yeah, why not? A bit of litter picking. I'll enjoy it if it's litter picking. Uh, we'll see what I'm doing. But yeah, that's what the police do. They actually influence judges. They're not supposed to do that. That's total uh, abuse of police powers, I think, to be able to do that. And I reckon they get people sent down. People they don't like, they'll get them sent down for next to nothing. They'll just tell the judge, yeah, look. This guy, we don't like this guy, he causes trouble on the street. Yeah, you know, we know he's he's going to be coming in front of a judge for next to nothing. Escalate it to Crown Court from magistrates and then make sure he gets some time in prison. That's what the police are like, I think. That's what I reckon they're doing. Now, I'll talk to you about my history with the police now. So you might say, Dave, well, you must have done something to piss the police off. For them to hate you that much, what have you done? Well... Whenever they come to my door to tell you off, you ever had that when the police come to your door to tell you off for something? Not to arrest you, just to tell you off. I always just argue with them and talk shit back. I don't take it. I'm not, I'm not intimidated by them. So they don't like that. That annoys them, right? So straight away, that annoys them. But what happened just over a year ago is I got a disease called rhabdomyolysis or 
rhabdo for short. And what it is, it's is actually a kidney disease and it was it's life threatening. It's a serious, serious disease. And um, what happened to me, it got so bad, I didn't know I had, I didn't know I, had, I just thought I had a bad back. I didn't know I had kidney disease. I'm assuming I've oh, got a bad back, that's all it is. And uh, but my actual kidneys were failing. And what happens, because it got so bad, I started getting delirious. Like once your kidneys start failing, um, you can actually send your mental because your, your blood's not been purified properly and it, it's life threatening. I ended up, right, it's quite funny this story. I ended up in my underpants, right, in a dressing gown, dressing gown and underpants, totally out of it, delirious, outside on the streets, right? And um, thankfully, someone called the police to come get me. But the problem was, because I was off my head at the time with this kidney, my kidney's nearly failing. Um, and I'd been smoking too much weed at the time. I don't think that had helped. But most of it was the kidneys. It was the kidneys that were failing. It was really causing me to be off my, totally off my head. The police come to get me, to you know, try and take me to hospital. And I'd like, think, think they're the enemy or something. So I've got to leg it from them. I didn't, I didn't fight them or punch them or anything. I just was running from them. So I was running from the police, right, totally off my head in my pants and um, dressing gown. And they were chasing me, and they ended up chasing me quite a long way. They couldn't stop me, because I'm quite a big bloke, quite strong. And um, they'd sent women at first, they'd sent women police officers, and they're only like small, they're not very weak, they're not very strong. And uh, I had them running around the field for ages, like totally off my head. They tasered me. They tasered me twice. One of the tasers didn't work, and then the second one did work. But I just got up again, took the taser, just got up, pepper spray me, everything. They couldn't stop me for ages, <laughs> right? Because I was running around this field totally off my head, but dying from kidney disease. And then eventually they got me. I just got exhausted in the end and collapsed, and they got me. Now what they then? This is where it went wrong with the police. They'd done everything fine up till that point. You know, they just got to get me, get get me basically under control and get me to hospital because I was dying. I was off my head. I was off my head from this kidney disease. What they did then, once they got me, well, they got me into the back of a police wagon. What is it's just like a metal box, like a paddy wagon, a metal box police van. They shut the doors and they shut the windows, and it was a boiling hot day. It was a really sunny hot day in the summer last June. It was. Uh, not June just gone, the one before, and I couldn't breathe because all the windows and doors were shut. I call it hot boxing. You know, like you see, um, you wouldn't do it to a dog, would you? You wouldn't have a dog put in a car on a hot day and shut all the windows and shut all the doors because dog can't breathe, and dies. And I couldn't breathe. They kept me in there for ages as punishment for running them around the field. Yet I was delirious and ill with this kidney disease. All they need to do is open a window so I could actually breathe. And I kid you not, I thought I was going to die in the back of that flipping police wagon. And they left me in there for ages at the side of the road, watching me, to try and weaken me. Right? This is where it all started with us, with me hating the police and them hating me back. They shouldn't have done that because I was just an ill man that needed taken to hospital. So I was there, like, drowning in sweat, like, can't breathe. It was terrible. It's really, really bad. It was a metal box, boiling up day. Eventually, they got the, they got the uh, police van going. They took ages about doing it. They drove it to uh, the Alex hospital. They parked up in the car park, and then they hotboxed me again. They just they, 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 they got out, kept all the windows and doors shut. Thankfully, it was a little bit cloudier, I think, then. It wasn't as hot. But it was still hot enough, do you know what I mean? I was cooking in the back of the uh, police van again. They hotboxed me again. I couldn't breathe. I was really struggling to breathe. By the time they got me out, they left me there for ages again. By the time they got me out, I couldn't support my legs. So they dragged me in by my arms, and my legs were completely like just, just gone, like just dragging along the floor. Just totally like half semi conscious. They'd actually tortured me. That was actual human torture. And I was on the verge of death anyway with rhabdomyolysis. It is a life-threatening disease. You know, if your kidneys fail, you, you, you're in serious trouble then. Um, 
So then what they did then, they dragged me into uh, into the hospital and I was just asking for water. Now they were getting me water, but they were taking the piss out of me while they give me the water. They go, oh, there you go, there's your water, there's your water. And I was drinking water, trying to get strong, like, trying to rehydrate myself because I lost so much sweating in the back of that uh, police van while they're hotboxing me. And I couldn't breathe in there, barely could breathe. It was so difficult to get my breath. Especially the first time when it was really hot and sunny. Thankfully, when I was at the hospital, it was a bit more cloudy. Thank God for that. Um, and then, eventually, the police buggered off. You know, they they went. Thank God. Uh, after doing all that to me, and I got into the hospital and I got into the um, short stay unit at the Alex Alexandra Hospital in Redditch, and they looked after me really good then. And I was out three days later. Because what they did, they got me on a drip. They soon I had this rhabdomyolysis, and they got me on a drip, and that sorted me out. That's what I need. I needed rehydrating and a drip, and uh, I'm okay now. Thankfully, I think I've made a full recovery. I think. I don't think there's any lasting kidney damage. Not well. I don't think so. But um, they did that. That was absolutely disgraceful. That was really bad. Now, the, no, the next thing the police did, that, well, that's not the end of it. That was probably the worst thing they did to me, right? So that made me hate the police, right? The other thing they did, they actually stole from my house. I had, um, in my house, because I smoked a fair bit of weed. Well, I used to, I don't now. I, don't, I smoke hardly anything now. Literally hardly next to nothing. But I used to smoke quite a lot. And I used to grow my own plant. I had my own plant in my house. That I just grew myself, paid all the electric, didn't try and rob the electric or anything. And uh, I just had one plant just for personal use. And um, I had these really good LED lights that are actually quite expensive. Now, the police came into my house when I was ill with this rhabdomyolysis. They checked my house to see what was going on in my house. And they found the plant. Obviously, they've got to confiscate the plant. Legally, they've got to do that. But what they also did was took my LED lights, they stole my very expensive, these LED lights, they're like 500 quid a piece. I think I had like two, two of them or something. And you know, some serious money there, they stole them. To do what? To go sell them on eBay, obviously. That's what happened, they took my LED lights. They left everything else. All the other gross stuff they left because it's all been purchased legally. Those LED lights were purchased legally. You can buy it. You can buy LED grow lights and just grow, you know, chili peppers with them or whatever you know legal thing you can grow. I was growing cannabis with them, but so what? You're not supposed to steal my possessions. So they also did that to me, which is disgraceful. So um, again, you know. I'm looking at it now, that the police, the police are the ones that are the criminals. The police on our streets are criminals. They're the crooks. I was just an ill man with kidney disease. And I was, oh, I was growing one cannabis plant for personal use. Big deal, do you know what I mean? It's hardly crime of the century, is it? Well, wait, it doesn't end there. What else did the police do? When they uh, arrested me, right, but this, this one's funny. When they arrested me um, and they hotboxed me, they stole my driving license. They actually took my driving license and kept it at Bromsgrove Police Station. They kept my driving license at Bromsgrove Police. They didn't tell me, they just took it. So I had to go get another. I assumed it had just fallen out of my wallet or something. Well, no, actually, I didn't. No, that's a lie. I knew it would have been the police who took it off me, but I didn't bother asking it. I didn't bother doing anything about getting it back. I just applied for a new driving license, 80 quid or something, to get a, to get a new one. I can't remember the exact cost of it, but just got a new one on the internet, new copy of my driving license, you know, the little card. So they took that off me as well. So they stole my flipping LED lights, they stole my driving license, and they hotboxed me. Literally, you wouldn't do that to a dog. You wouldn't do it to an animal. You wouldn't do that to a, a dog. Cook it in the back of a car, back of a police van. You wouldn't do it to a dog. Why would you do it to a human being who's ill, who just needs hospital uh, treatment? As soon as I was at the hospital, I was fine. They got me on the drip. I was fine, well behaved at the hospital. Because I knew they were trying to look after me rather than trying to cook me to death. Back of the police van. So all these things 
made me very, very pissed off at the UK police. Right? So a bit of a while later, you know, I've regained my strength, I've got over the rhabdomyolysis. I thought, right, I'm going to make a video taking the piss out of the police and saying, come fucking fight me, police officers. Instead of being little bitches, right, doing your hot boxing, pilfering fucking things out my house, pilfering a fucking driving license out my wallet, come fucking fight me like a fucking man. Who's your hardest bastard? Your hardest bastard in West Midlands Police or West Mercia Police. Come fucking fight me on top of fucking Rednall Hill. Or if you want, let's do it in a boxing gym. We do it at Droitwich maybe. Put gloves on and I'll fucking batter the shit out of you. I'd rather do it on Rednall Hill then. I'd rather do it on Rednall Hill. Fucking, if rules have to go out the window, they have to go out the window. I want to fucking fight you, but will you actually turn up? Then you're just pussies. Get your hardest fucking boy, UK police. Whiskey Victor was giving it large. He's giving it large, but he's absolute pussy and he's flapped it, ain't you? Whiskey fucking Victor. You ain't got any balls to fight me. And that's the truth. You ain't got any nuts to fight me, that guy ain't. He's just trying to, he just don't like, I don't know what the fuck's wrong with that guy. He's totally mental, that idiot. The typical UK idiot police officer. Stupid, brainless PC plod, ain't you? Whiskey Victor. You bold swat. And paint that bold head in your fucking blood. Fucking fool. So yeah, so what happened? After I've, after I've then slagged them off on the internet, how much I hate them and that, what have they then done? in retaliation. What are the police done? Because I, I told you how to make that um, nail bomb grenade. I never told you to throw it at police officers. I, I wouldn't make it dangerous. Start messing with explosives, with fireworks and stuff. It's dangerous. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it myself. But I did tell you how you could potentially make a nail bomb to defend your home if you needed to from uh, whoever, right? But what did the police then do? Because they're pissed off at Dave Genvy. Remember, they started it with the hot boxing and stealing my fucking uh, driving license, stealing my LED lights. What did they then do? They phoned me at half two in the morning, right? Half two in the morning, slagging me off and taking the piss how I don't get to see my daughter. That is utterly disgraceful. That's what they did at half two in the morning try and wind me up or piss me off. It didn't work because I just took the piss out of them back. And then I think I made another video taking the piss out of them. That's disgraceful, isn't it? And then as soon as I've made an actual actual criminal offence that I was guilty of, the abusive phone call to that person who fully deserved it, as soon as that's happened, what have they done then? What have they done then? They tried to tamper with my case tamper with a judge to get it escalated to Crown, so I get the book thrown at me. I don't think they could give me a prison sentence for that. Well, maybe they could have, but they didn't. They give me 150 hours community service to try and get me to pipe down. Well, is this your idea of me piping down, police? Is this your fucking idea of me piping down? I'm taking the fucking piss out of you, West Midlands Police and West Mercia Police. What the fuck are you gonna do? Um, you know where I am. You know my address. You know my fucking phone number. You know who the fuck I am. Come down here. Knock on the front fucking door. Let's go out the fucking bun shop. If you've got any fucking bollocks. But I don't think you have, have you? You ain't got no fucking bollocks. You just have a fucking scrap with me. You're just a bunch of pussies. You shouldn't respect the police. They don't deserve respect. Because they're the ones who are the criminals on the streets. They're the ones who are the actual criminals. There's a lot of corruption in the police. And they do, I think, they do fuck with a lot of cases, a lot of criminal court cases. I think they fuck with them with people they don't like. There's people out there they might not like, some like tough guy in the local neighbourhood who they don't like because he stands up to the police. He doesn't allow himself to be bullied by the police. And they don't like him. So when he's is up for you know a little case, a little criminal offence or whatever, they'll tamper with it to get him to try and get him sent down. But even if I do get sent down, I'm only going to be the same when I come out, slagging you off again, police. 
because I don't give a flying fuck. Do you know what I mean? So even if you do get me sent down for a little fucking bit, few months inside, I'm just going to come out and slag you off again when I come out. So ain't going to change anything for you. Well, maybe Whiskey Victor can change things. Maybe he can come and shut me the fuck up. But I fucking doubt it, because he's pussied out so far, ain't you, Whiskey? You little pussy, little bald-headed pussy, you've pussied out so far. You ain't come to fight me so far. Why? Because you know I'm going to take that fist and smash your teeth down your fucking throat, that's why. You be shitting your teeth for a week, you fucking dickhead. That's why, innit? And you know that, Whiskey. So you ain't going to fuck with me. But maybe there's someone else in the UK police who can f come fight me. Come shut me up. Come break my jaw off my face. Maybe. Maybe someone else can do it. We'll see. We'll see if you've got anyone in the UK police who can shut me the fuck up as I slag you off whenever I fucking want. Yeah? Yeah. All right, and see you later.